In this video of coordinate geometry, we're going to be continuing with our linear equations and the many forms that we need to be able to deal with and use. A uh, quick summary of the ones we've done so far. We have the gradient intercept form. Uh, that one was our y equals mx plus b. y equals mx plus b. This one was good because it was useful. Then the other form we've looked at is the general form. And remembering the general form was ax plus by plus c equals zero. This one was useful not because of its practicality, but because it presented the answer in a very neat way. In this lesson, we're going to be learning another one. This one is still to do with linear equations, but it is called the point gradient form of a linear equation. Where our gradient intercept form was useful in that we could read information from it, this one is useful because we can be provided with minimal information and be able to create a linear equation based on simply being given a gradient and one point. That's all the information we need. We don't need to worry ourselves with calculating a y-intercept, which, when not provided with a graph, can be extremely difficult, if not impossible, to do. So this one, you only need a gradient, any point to create a linear equation. The formula is here. y minus y1 equals m outside of x minus x1. Get used to this formula. Remember it. It is going to save your life at one time or another. y and x, so this y and this x, remain a y and an x. Remember, in any kind of linear equation, in our general form, we had ax plus by plus c equals zero, and our gradient intercept, we had y equals mx plus b. In both cases, you had a y and an x term. So in our formula, we have the y and the x circled in red. They're going to stay a y and x. Otherwise, we have a gradient m, which is going to be given to us, and our coordinate values our first value in the coordinate x1 and our second value y1 are going to be plugged in the formula there. We're going to rearrange it, we're going to play with it and we're going to make it look like a general form or a gradient intercept form depending on what information is required. Okay, first example, make it nice and easy. The equation you're going to need to remember. y minus y1 equals m outside of x minus x1. That's going to save your life. Find the equation of a line passing through the point negative 5, 6, and it has a gradient of 4. There are key bits of information. I'm going to write them here over on the side. m equals 4, and the coordinate of negative 5, 6, being x1 and y1. Okay, plugging those into our equation, the first y without a number attached to it stays a y, minus our y1 value of 6, equals 4 outside of x minus our x1 value, which is negative 5. Now we just play around with the equation. First off, I'm going to expand the brackets. Remember, every term in the brackets needs to be multiplied by the term on the outside. So I'm going to have 4 times x, which is 4x. Now, minus a negative here is going to turn into a plus sign, so I just have 4 times 5 to give me plus 20. Then I'm going to need to move my minus 6 over. I'm going to move a minus 6 by adding it. So y is equal to 4x plus 26. Now I've left with whole numbers uh, in the gradient intercept form. There is no need to convert it to general form. This is more useful and it still looks pretty neat. So I'm going to leave it like that. So there you have it. There is a linear equation using the point gradient form of y minus y1 equals m outside of x minus x1. Continuing on with a few more examples, the questions you're going to be asked are relatively the same. They're just going to get harder and harder to perform. So here, find the equation of a line joining the two points, minus 2, 6, and 2, negative 4. You'll notice that they haven't given you the gradient. We know how to work it out when given two points. It's rise over run. But these are the kinds of things you can expect to happen when you're asked to perform a relatively easy task. Okay, first off, we're going to write our equation. y minus y1 equals m outside of x minus x1. They're the bits of information we need. We need a gradient and we need a coordinate. 
Now we're given two coordinates, we're going to come back to that and show you that both of them will get you the same answer. But first of all, we need the gradient. Gradient being rise over run, or a more coordinate friendly version, y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. I'm going to label this first point as x1, y1, and the second point as x2 and y2. So y2 minus y1 is negative 4 minus 6 divided by x2 being a 2 minus a negative 2. Minus 4 minus 6 is negative 10. 2 minus a negative 2 is 4. Simplifying that down, I have negative 5 over 2. Okay, there's my gradient. I'm going to use our x1, y1 to plug into our formula first. So let's have a look at what we've got. We've got a y minus our y1 value of 6 equals m, which is our negative 5 over 2 outside of x minus our x1 value of negative 2. Expanding the brackets, I need to multiply negative 5 over 2 by x, and then I need to multiply negative 5 over 2 by a positive 2. Remember that's going to turn that into a plus sign. So I'm going to get minus 5. Now we still have y minus 6 on this side so I need to move the minus 6 across and I'm going to do that by adding it. So y is equal to minus 5 over 2x and be left with plus 1. Now just to illustrate my point and use the second coordinate given to us of 2, negative 4, just to see if picking any coordinate will work as long as those coordinates are on the line that we're trying to graph. Okay, so filling in the bits of information we need, we have y minus the y value of negative 4 equals our gradient minus 5 over 2 outside of x minus our x value of 2. So I'm going to have y plus 4 equals negative 5 over 2x, expanding that one. Then a negative times a negative is going to give me plus 5 halves multiplied by 2 is just going to give me 5. Now I need to move the plus 4 across by taking it away. So y equals negative 5 over 2x plus 1, which is the same as our answer here. So in this question where it said find the equation of the line joining two points, you can be sure that those two points are on the line you're trying to find. So it shouldn't matter what of those two points you want to use. Okay, moving on to our last example, getting just a little more unnecessarily difficult, but nonetheless more challenging. So a line with a gradient of three quarters passes through the midpoint of three, seven, and one, three. Find the linear equation. So in this case, we are given the gradient, but we're only given information to find the coordinate on our line. So we're given the fact that our coordinate we need is the midpoint of these two here. So we're going to have to go ahead and find that coordinate. Remember midpoint is equal to capital M. Now the x value is equal to x1 plus x2 and you halve it because it's in the middle and your y value is y1 plus y2 and you halve it because we're looking for something in the middle. So x1 and x2 is 3 plus 1, and we halve it. And our y value is 7 plus 3, halved. Calculating that out, 3 plus 1 is 4, halved is 2. 7 plus 3 is 10, halved is 5. So there's our coordinate we need to graph this line. Going ahead, filling in our point gradient form y minus y1 equals m outside of x minus x1. Our y stays minus our y value of 5 that we just worked out equals our gradient of 3 quarters outside of x minus the x coordinate we just found being 2. Close the brackets off. y minus 5 equals, expand this brackets, 3 quarters times x is just 3 quarters of x and 3 quarters times a negative 2 is minus 3 times 2 over 4. Cleaning this up a bit, y minus 5 is equal to 
3 quarters x minus 6 over 4, which can be simplified down to 3 over 2. Then the last thing we need to do is move our negative 5 across by adding it. So y is equal to 3 quarters x negative 3 halves plus 5. So we're going to be using up 1 and a half of our 5 to get it back to 0, which leaves us with a positive 3 and a half left. Or for those of you who prefer fractions, 3 quarters of x plus 7 over 2. Now we could go on to convert that to general form, make it look a little neater because our answer has fractions in it, but I'm more of a practicality than an aesthetic kind of guy and I like to keep my equations useful rather than neat and so I'm going to leave it like that. Okay, thank you for your time and good luck.